we're going to move on to some more morbid news now. Uh, we're going to talk about South Korea. The latest. At least 153 were crushed to death in the South Korean crowd surge. We're going to talk about the mechanics of such a thing happening. The police are currently investigating as to why this happened, like or how this happened, rather. Uh, some of the preliminary investigations show that uh, they were too preoccupied with uh, traffic to recognize crowd control was a necessity. This, of course, happened during uh, the, you know, Halloween. This happened basically during uh, their Halloween celebrations. More than 150 people were killed during a Halloween celebration, crushed to death in a narrow alleyway. Now questions about how everything got so out of control. Police say that they've gathered footage from 50 surveillance cameras from this alley and around here. But short time ago, a police chief offering one possible cause to this crowd crush. He said there were only 137 officers on hand. Itaewon is like their America town area. And anytime something happens there, shit gets blamed on the U.S. No, I, I did see some people being like, Koreans were celebrating Halloween, which is another indication of Western imperialism or whatever. And it's like, bro, that's like, there's plenty of things you can say about, uh, you know, uh, American culture impacting Korea, obviously. But like, that's insane. This didn't happen because it was a Halloween celebration. This happened because uh, uh, the police were not moving crowds in the way that they were supposed to. Okay. Like, that's wild. It's just, it's crowd mismanagement. As much as I love shitting on America, like, this is not an instance where you, I think you can do that. Anyway, let's continue. Brilliant. This morning, authorities investigating how a massive Halloween celebration turned into one of Korea's deadliest disasters. That crowd surge toppling revelers like dominoes. Those screams and those images, rows of civilians and medics frantically doing CPR. Authorities saying at least 154 were killed and 149 injured, and there are two Americans among the dead. Police this morning taking responsibility, saying there were only 137 officers on duty as about 100,000 partygoers began pouring out of subways and into the streets of the Itaewon neighborhood for Seoul's first major Halloween celebration since the pandemic. By 10 p.m., this alleyway becoming a deadly bottleneck. The partiers converge from both ends, from the street down here below and from up there. And that alleyway is just 14 feet wide. In the middle, they were all crossed. There was nowhere to go and there was no one to control the crowd. Just after 1030, first responders began wading in, pumping away at CPR, carrying away victims, many of them shoeless. In the coming hours, the dead placed into those blue body bags lining the street. And in hospitals, the howls of family members crumbling to the floor. Jesus Christ. Dude. Those two Americans now identified as Ann Giesk, a nursing student from the University of Kentucky, and Stephen Blessy, an exchange student from Kennesaw State University in Georgia. For people who yeah, are wondering why do they uh, uh, do, why do they cover like the Americans separately? That's all, they always do that. Like every country will... If you've ever looked at foreign news, like in Turkey, if there was a Turkish person that was trampled there or a, a part of the stampede, they would cover it. It's just like, that's normal process. Every country does that when they talk about their own nationals. Is that all of the fatalities happened in that alleyway behind us. The youngest was a child still in middle school. And you can see that crowd at Jesus the Christ. vigil behind me growing. A week of national mourning has been declared here. George. So sad and horrifying. Okay, Matt, thanks very much. Bring. So it's an issue that's solvable through infrastructure. Are more cops really necessary? Uh, I think, yes, this is one job that uh, cops would absolutely do. Uh, yeah. This is like one of those instances where like more cops are necessary because like their, their job is to do crowd control. This is like not an invasive and, and like, they're not there to arrest people. They're there to make sure that people move. It's like, it's like how security works in crowds at, at concerts and shit. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to talk about with respect to this was how this kind of thing happens I think this happened at the Hodge. This happened. This has happened many, many times. A good thread on what to do if you're ever caught in a crowd like this. Okay, we'll cover that as well. Oh, here. This is the video I was looking for. Hey there, and welcome to Brain Stuff. Welcome, welcome. There's like multiple different ways crowds can kill you. Crowd crush is one. Stampede is one. 
Um, like, uh, there's a, there's another one. I'm asphyxiation. Suffocation is usually how you die in a crowd crush. That's how that works. Crowd. A high density crowd is one where there's six or more people per square meter. And it can get a lot more packed than that, but that's the lowest level threshold. And the reason that's the threshold is because when you have six people per square meter, individuals in the crowd start to lose their ability to move on their own accord. Things get more and more packed and the crowd tends to behave a lot like a fluid. So there's a couple of ways that you can actually die in a high density crowd. The first one's called a crowd crush. Now, when you first start to get to about six people per square meter, the individuals lose their ability to move around. The next step is that you lose your ability to move your arms from your sides. Dude, the way he's describing it is so weird, like the tone he's using. An excellent visual, a visual explanation by The Guardian of what happened in Korea. See this chart in particular. A change from approximately four to six individuals per square meter changes us behaving like people to behaving like fluids. It's low risk if you have two people per square meter. It's high risk when the density goes up to six people per square meter. Bodies are jammed together so tightly they can no longer choose where they go and they begin, they begin to behave like a fluid. Pressure waves can travel through them and they lose control. And as people pack in further and further, the pressure from all sides keeps your lungs from inflating and deflating, which means you lose your ability to breathe. What's amazing and horrific is that people suffocate in crowds because they're squeezed so tightly by the people pressing against them. That's a crowd crush. Another way you can die in a crowd is what's called progressive crowd collapse. So say you have a bunch of people crowded together in a high density crowd and one of them falls down. That creates a hole in this crowd and the people who were formerly leaning against the person who just fell down start to fall over and so on and so forth and a domino effect is created. People start to pile up and the ones on bottom are literally pressed to death by the humans who have piled up on top of them. Okay, we're going we're gonna to cover what to do in a crowd crush, an informational thread in light of the Itaewon Don soul tragedy. Even if you think this will never happen to you, taking a moment to learn what to do in this situation could save your life and lives of those around you. When you are entering a venue, make note of the exits. Number one. If you're attending a concert or a large event, make sure you make note of where the emergency exits are when entering. Once it gets too crowded, the main exit might not be the most viable option. Number two, learn how to watch crowd density. This may be the most important step in a thread. Once crowd density reaches six people per square meter or more, it becomes very dangerous. So the moment that you uh, start realizing that you can't move your arms, you're stuck. Understand where crowd crush happens. Most crowd crush deaths occur in small spaces such as alleyways and mosh pits. This is why it's best to leave venues early and not wait for things to get dangerous since others may get the same idea and crush at the exit. Alert people. Since crowd crushes occur in loud environments, people use outs people outside the crush have no idea it's happening. If you're not at an organized event and notice a crowd crush, get up high. Alert security and event organizers to stop the music and make everyone aware. And make space around your chest. If you're stuck in a crowd and you feel density increasing, make space around your chest with your arms. Pinning your arms to your sides or above your head leaves your chest open to being compressed. That's often the way you die. Do not take off backpack. Your first instinct may be to make more space by removing a bulky backpack. This is a huge hazard. People being pushed into it may trip and, and in case uh, have a uh, pile up. Once the crowd reaches eight to nine people per square meter, those inside can't move freely and the crowd behaves like a liquid. This video is insane. I think it's from, is this from, uh, look at this here. Look, I mean, this is perfect. You will feel yourself being moved in different directions, but it's important you don't fight it. The clip demonstrates one of these waves. How crazy is that? Do not scream and push. If you begin acting panicked, hostile, and inconsiderate of those around you, it will become contagious. In this situation, pushing one person can lead to a horrible chain reaction. Again, staying calm and moving with the crowd is the safest choice. Do not fall. This is pretty intuitive, but it's important. It must be emphasized. Your top priority once the crowd crush starts is staying upright. Once you fall down, people will fall on top of you or climb you. You won't be able to get back up. And if you fall, people will trip on you. They'll fall as well. And also, they, will, they might end up stepping on you too. It, it, it makes it uh, easier for you to suffocate under uh, as well. Avoid walls. Most people who asphyxiate and crowd crushes are pushed against solid objects like floors, barriers, fences, or walls. Do your best to avoid becoming trapped against the wall or even back of someone trapped against the wall to increase your chances of survival. Help your neighbors only if you can. Assess the risk first. 
If someone is slipping down and you're in a position to help them, you should. But if you're unable and someone is yanking on you to try to get up, if you could, it could result in both of you falling. Bro, disabled people are fucked. Yeah, of course. But I think if you're a disabled person, you know that already in situations like this. Uh, and that's precisely why there's always like a separate area if uh, hopefully they're complying with like ADA, uh, hopefully the venue is engaging in ADA compliance. If you're a disabled person, do not engage in the mosh pit, I think. Aftermath, when the crowd think, when the crowd thins, there may be people on the floor since these things usually result from a lack of event planning. There might not have been enough medical personnel to help right away. In this case, volunteers save lives. The next part's about how to do CPR and when to provide it. I'm going to skip that part. And we're going to move on from this.